Hey again, everyone. I'm the developer of the XR Gaming plugin on the Steam Deck. For those who aren't familiar with the plugin already, it uses the sensors on your glasses, if you have X-Real or Witcher glasses, to track head movements and create effects that we can use for gaming. So I've added a lot of new features since my last video, and I wanted to create a new video to go over those features, um, introduce you to the plugin, and talk about how to get the best experience out of all the various modes that it has, and also show you some demos of, of things working. Sorry in advance for my voice, I have a little bit of a scratchy throat right now. So the first thing you'll need to do, if you haven't already, is install the Decky Loader on your deck. Sorry, I'm going to look down here at my, at my Steam Deck. Um, once you install Decky Loader, you'll see this little plug icon on your right side sidebar when you hit the three dots button. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for installing the, the Decky Loader, but if you want to avoid Decky, as some people do, there are ways to install my application without using it. Uh, but you won't get a lot of the controls that you see in this video if you if you decide to go that route. So I would recommend the Decky plugin. Once you have Decky Loader installed, you can go into the Decky Store, which is this icon up here in the top. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, or search for XR or XReal, and you'll find this plugin right here called XR Gaming. Go uh, hit hit the install button. And uh, then once you go into back into the sidebar here, you will see XR Gaming. And when you enter that plugin, it will do the rest of the installation for you. And then you will see this view right here. So the plugin now shows the connection status of the device. Right now I have my glasses unplugged. So it says that there's no device connected. Uh, if I plug in my glasses, and I'm going through HDMI right now through my dock, so it's a little bit slow right now. But you can see now that it says uh, Vitur 1 is connected, so it's recognized my glasses. Uh, if you have any of the um, X-Real Air line of glasses, then it'll also show your model there instead of uh, instead of Vitur. I'm planning on adding more devices this year in 2024, so depending on when you watch this video, you may also be able to use like Rokit or, or hopefully um, some other devices uh, as time goes on. So you can see the plugin starts out in the disabled state. I'll go down to this toggle right here. This is the mode slider, and um, and right now it's disabled. That means that right now in my glasses, I'm just seeing a normal static display, as if you had plugged your glasses into, into any device that wasn't providing any sort of special uh, uh, features. So let me first switch into the virtual display mode and talk a little bit about that. So I'll select this slider, slide all the way over to virtual display. This mode allows me to put the, the game screen somewhere, anywhere I'd like, and have it stay there. So let me load up Mass Effect real quick. I already had it, I already had it running, so I should be able to sort of exit out of the store here and resume Mass Effect. And you can see when I move my head that the that the screen is actually moving relative to my head. There is some funny output from the glasses. Um, you won't be seeing that that has to do with me using HDMI and the resolution of my screen. Um, so don't worry too much about that. That green line won't be there. But it's a little bit hard to tell from this video, but the, the idea with virtual display is that it mimics a real-life screen. So if I have a real screen, if I have a TV on the wall, when I move my head, the TV doesn't follow my head. And neither does this display. So I place the screen. Now I'm free to look um, wherever. I can look somewhere on the screen. So if I need to read some text in this corner, I can look up here, or I can look anywhere I want on the screen. If I look somewhere else in the room, I don't see the display at all. So I can see, you know, if I have my glasses in sort of a pass-through mode or I turn the dimming off, or or if I'm using X-Real, if I don't have the cover on, then I can see the real world around me and, um, you know, talk to people or look at, you know, a show that I have playing on the side. So, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to have that. Let me get out of Mass Effect here and back into the controls. Okay. So before you go into this mode, there are some settings that are really important. Um, I've found that um, that the Steam Deck can have some pretty poor input lag, and essentially these are just another form of input. So in order to make the screen appear sort of floating in one in one space, it's important that we have the lowest amount of input lag possible. And I found a lot of settings in the deck that affect input lag. So the first one I'm going to show you. Is um, is setting up the display resolution. So if you come here in the in the Steam menu and go into the settings, go down to display, 
and there's this toggle that automatically sets the resolution. I would recommend enabling this. For the sake of the stream, I'm doing a 720p signal um, to record this video, but I would recommend just setting this, or if you do want to set a specific resolution, it's very important that the resolution is the same aspect ratio as your glasses. So um, our glasses are 1080p glasses. That means that they're 16 by nine. Any of the resolutions you, you choose here should be 16 by nine. If you do the Steam Deck's normal resolution, this is actually 16 by 10, so don't do that. It will slow down, add input lag to your game. The next setting that I have found to be, or a couple settings that I found to be really important are in the performance menu here on the right, it's that battery icon. The first is to uh, enable this toggle called disables frame limit. If I, if I turn it off, I'm able to move around the frame limit. Some people find this useful for certain games or maybe for saving battery or something like that. But for the sake of best performance with my plugin, you want to disable the frame limit. The other setting that's really important here is to allow tearing. This is sort of like V-Sync. Um, it, it may make it so that when you move your head, the screen does some brief tearing, but, um, but I found that to be really important to allow that sort of for, for performance purposes. And then the next settings I'm going to show you, you're going to want to do for, uh, for every game you play, unfortunately. So if I go into the game details of any game, I'm going to want to go over here to the properties. And every game should have a tab that has the game resolution. You're going to want to set this to native so that it, so that it pulls in the resolution of your glasses or your preferred resolution. Um, it might not default to native, it probably defaults to default. So for any game that you want to play, you should do that. And then the last thing that's really important for every game is to go into the game itself. And, and every game should have a menu that's either graphics or video options. You want to go into that. And again, make sure that your game resolution is a 16 by 9 resolution. And also make sure that you've got VSync turned off. So this accompanies the tearing setting that we did in the performance tab. You're going to want to turn that off. It's also pretty important that you get a high frame rate on your game. So right now it's showing that I'm getting 60 frames per second up in the performance uh, view in the corner. So that's ideal. If you're getting less than 60, unfortunately, um, you will see you know a little bit of flicker when you move your head around. Um, it'll kind of seem to blur the screen a little bit. <clears throat> and it'll also change how well it tracks your head movements, you know, and how static that, that display looks. So you do want to, you know, if you're not achieving that, go into your settings and actually turn some things off, lower textures, turn off some of the other um, intensive features. And you can even lower the resolution so that your graphics card doesn't have to do as much work. Just do make sure that it is a 16 by 9 resolution. Um, so that's it. That's it for the, you know, optimal settings. Those are all the recommended things that you need to do to get the best performance. Uh, try to hit 60 frames per second and lower the input like, um, you know, do whatever you can to achieve those things. One thing that you didn't see when I was in this menu that you will see the first time is a, um, a guide that will pop up and teach you a little bit about virtual display when you first use it. Um, I recommend that you read through that. It'll go over all the same things that I just did, but I recommend that you that you go over that and um, and make sure you understand it and you followed all the instructions that I've described here. Um, there are a couple other settings that you'll see here for virtual display. That these are specific to that mode, so when you change modes, you won't always see these same controls here. But the first one is the display size. This is pretty obvious, um, but you know, you can see as I'm moving it up, it's actually making my display bigger. Um, this this decides, you know, how much how how much I have to look around to see the whole screen. If I make it really big, then it's like a you know it's like a giant big screen TV. But you know, the field of view on the glasses is pretty small, so I do have to you know do a lot of head movements to actually look around and see all the corners. Um, some people really enjoy this. Uh, the default is one, so this fills up your vision as much as the glasses would. <clears throat> if the display was static. 
the recenter button. If you don't like where the screen is placed, you can use recenter to put it somewhere else. So I hit the button and the screen shows up over there. I hit the button again, it comes back. There are um, other ways to achieve recentering and also recalibration. You can see it, the text here says you can double tap your headset to recenter. Um, your mileage will vary on this. Everybody taps a little bit differently. Um, the cadence uh, of the tap is pretty important. So I find that you don't want to tap it as quickly as you would like a double click on a mouse. You want to tap it more like a knock knock on a door. So, um, and you should also be sort of lifting your finger up and kind of doing a really, a really solid knock on your, on your glasses. Um, ideally the corner of the glasses will kind of go down when you hit it. And I find that the nose pad that you're using affects this a lot. So, you know, everyone's experience is going to be different. You might find that the multi-tap works well for you. You might find that, um, that it, that it works well on x Hill, but not on Vachur or something like that. Cause I do find the Vachur glasses to be a little bit more, um, um, not solid, but just harder to move so that it's actually, I have to hit it a little bit harder to get this multi-tap to work. So if you tap it twice, it will recenter it. Maybe it'll work here if I demonstrate it. Tap, tap. There. Um, it was. It does take me a couple of tries with the Vature glasses sometimes. If I triple tap it, it'll recalibrate. For Vature, that's not very important because the screen doesn't tend to drift or, or, or show any noise. Um, but with x Real, you may find that um, when you first plug it in, you get a lot of drift. And if you recalibrate it or with the button or doing the triple tap, I'll show you the button here recalibrate headset. You can either do that or a triple tap to try to recalibrate it. One feature that you might find pretty important because every game is going to be a little bit different, especially depending on the frame rate. So if you have, if you have your game running at 60 frames per second, you're going to get a pretty smooth experience. If, if it's running at 30 frames per second, or somewhere around there, lower than 60, you might find that maybe it doesn't track your head exactly because it should look like a static display. So when I move my head, it shouldn't it shouldn't sort of follow my head and then bounce back. It should kind of try to stay where I put it. So if you're if you're moving your head and you're actually seeing the screen sort of wiggle, and I and I recommend for this also that you put put the dimmers on or the covers on, and and so you don't see as much of the real world. And then you'll and then you'll really kind of get a sense of whether it feels like a real screen or not. But if you feel like it's moving, um, either um, it does attempt to sort of predict where your head is going to be when you move. Um, because there is some input lag, so it has to do some amount of prediction. Uh, if you find that it's over predicting, where you move your head and it actually moves ahead of you, then um, then the then the look ahead is too high by by default or by whatever you've set it to. So you're going to want to start at a if you're if if you're seeing screen movement and you want to change this slider, you're going to want to start at the lowest setting above default right here where you see that that new message, and then just move your head back and forth, and and test the waters with that display. Does it seem like does that feel like it's fixed? If not, you just slowly move it up, keep moving your head, and, and just continue to move the slider up while you move your head until it actually feels like a real display in front of you. Hopefully default will sort of cut it for, for most cases, but if it doesn't, you can come in here and change it. It doesn't save it per game, so if I find the right setting for this game, I will need to go back and set it to default maybe for another game. So keep that in mind if you're seeing um, some weird screen, screen behavior. You, you may have to change this per game. Um, it is important to note that right now this is running as a shader in Vulkan only. So that means that um, most modern games and, um, and, and some games that are running on, um, on Direct3D or DirectX um, will still work because they're going through sort of translation libraries to Vulkan when you're running them on Steam or in Proton. Um, but OpenGL, for example, just won't work right now. So there are some games where you'll find that you turn on virtual display, you go into the game, and it doesn't work. Um, and then also you'll notice that the Steam menus themselves and and you know and Steam itself um, is not following the virtual display at all. And that's because this is not um, this is not a Vulcan game. So um, keep that in mind. You have to be in game for this to be working. It has to be a Vulcan game. Um, let's see. Uh, so streaming apps may not may not work, um, like Moonlight, for example, or Steam Link. Um, those 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 probably won't work. I have heard that there are ways to sort of tinker with things and get maybe Moonlight to render in Vulkan, but um, out of the box you're not going to see that kind of thing working. I've also found that um, 
installing a, a launcher through such as like heroic games launcher if you install that through the discover store you might find that vulcan games installed through that launcher won't work i did get heroic games to work if i installed heroic itself if i used the app image instead of using the discover store flat pack so um you know play around with that if if you're inclined but um, there just keep in mind that there are some games where this won't work um, if you plug in, if you plug it in, you turn on a game, and you're seeing just a black screen, sort of like this. Uh, there is a chance that your screen is somewhere else in the room, and so you can try looking around, or you can just try recentering it. But keep in mind, if you see a black screen, that it may just be that you're not looking at the virtual display wherever it was placed. It might be placed somewhere random, depending on where your glasses were pointing when you plug them in. Uh, I mentioned the drift, um, but. Uh, with the Vitra, I haven't seen this at all because they've provided me with an official SDK that's actually available publicly for anyone, uh, and that's amazing. So it, you know, it's provided a very stable experience. But um, Xreal, unfortunately, haven't done that. So if you're using the Xreal Air line of glasses to use this plugin, you'll probably find that the screen sort of drifts away from where you place it. So I place it here. I play a game for five minutes, and I notice that I'm actually looking over here now. Um, it it can be very slow drift, so it can still be playable, but um, you can try recalibrating if that happens, but you may find that you just have to occasionally recenter your screen using either the button or the multi-tap to get it back where you want it to be. It's kind of something we're going to have to deal with for now until Xreal helps us out and actually provides a, a good SDK. Um, I would say that this influences my recommendations for glasses, so if you don't own a pair of glasses yet, if you're on the market for it, and if this plugin or Steam Deck Gaming in general is something that would be kind of your primary use case for owning the glasses, then at the moment I just I can't recommend Xreal just because of the drift. So um, for this plugin specifically, I I have to recommend Vature. Um, if you plan on using it for other things, if you want to use um, a Nebula or other first-party applications that these companies are putting out, then those will probably all work great. And, you know, don't let this plugin be the thing that convinces you to, to buy glasses if you think that something else will be a better fit. But if this is your primary use for the glasses, then then Vature right now is the way to go. I am uh, also collaborating with Rokid, so that should be a pretty good experience as well when that's, when that's launched. The um, virtual display mode has something that I really enjoy using but your experience may vary. So it's the side-by-side -side mode toggle that's in the advanced settings. Uh, it's tucked away in the advanced settings because it is not the best experience and I want to provide really smooth experiences. So right now it's for people who don't mind uh, sort of trial and error to get things to work occasionally. Um, and uh, there is one setting before you play around with side-by-side -side mode. There's one more setting in the performance tab that is very important for a consistent experience across across all games and that is the scaling mode i think by default mine was set to fill so it's important that you come in here and change it to stretch or anything other than fill but stretch will provide the most consistent experience because once you've got sps mode enabled and i don't want to do it right now because i'm going through hdmi and things get weird but once you enable this toggle you'll see another toggle that is called uh, content is stretched and when you set the scaling mode to stretch in the performance tab and you enable that toggle in my controls for the plugin then you'll get a very consistent experience across all games so i've found that sps works really well once i've enabled those two things um, it's also important this is virtual display so all of the other things i talked about for virtual display are still just as important for the getting the highest frames per second getting the lowest input lag that's all very important still Um, so the SPS mode can be enabled through this toggle that you see here, but it can also be enabled through the glasses. So, uh, um, so far I support X-Rail and Vature, and they both have ways of enabling the mode directly from the glasses. So if I, if I hold, if I long press the appropriate button, it'll switch automatically into that mode and you will see this toggle switch on automatically. So you can change it either through the toggle or through your glasses, and it should be a pretty seamless experience. It should all just work pretty well. Um, and I do recommend, it's, it's actually pretty important that you're already in a game with virtual display mode on before you enable SPS mode. So go into the game that you want. I've got, I've got Mass Effect loaded up. Now would be the perfect time to turn on SPS mode.
you don't want to turn on SPS mode if you are still doing things in Steam. Or if you're still fiddling with these controls, it will be possible to navigate these menus in SPS mode, but it'll be difficult. Um, you kind of have to train yourself to like close one eye and just and just uh, do it that way, or train yourself to kind of not get sick from the double vision that you're going to experience. So try to get done with all the menus and everything and get into the game, and then you can enable SPS mode from your glasses. You'll see, um, you'll see one more toggle, or one more slider, that's sort of like this one. Um, when you enable SPS mode, it'll be called Display Distance. And that's the primary feature of SPS, actually, is, um, is being able to put the screen further away from you or closer up. Right now, by default, I found that the X-Rail and Witcher glasses tend to put the screen about a dozen feet away from you. So it's actually, even though you may not notice it, it's actually sort of a big theater screen. And, uh, and it's farther away from you. You'll, you'll, you'll see it if you get close to a wall or close to a monitor, and then, you, and then you look through the glasses, you may actually be able to notice that the screen is far away. And some people find that that puts a lot of strain on their eyes. So using the display distance slider, you can actually move the screen closer to you. And you can actually then pin the, pin the display and have it be next to your real monitors in real life if you're working you know, at, a, at a station or if you're sitting next to a TV or something, you can actually just put it next to that other screen at the same distance, and then your eyes won't have to shift depth when, when they shift over to that screen, which is pretty cool. Uh, one other thing that SPS mode can do that very few games support, um, which, is why, which is why I'm mentioning it last, but some games do provide 3D side-by-side -side rendering, which is when they show two screens, one for each eye, side-by-side. -side. And if you have a game that supports that, um, and you would see it in the options, in the graphics options, or something like like what I'm showing here on the screen for Mass Effect. You would see, you know, a way to enable side by side, and and some emulators I know do this as well, like Dolphin, provide like a side by side mode. If you're playing a game or an emulator that does that, then there's actually a one more toggle that says Content is 3D, and when you enable that toggle, it'll it'll split the screen into each eye, and so you will actually see a 3D image. In your virtual display and you can still do all the other things i talked about with the side-by-side -side distance as well um, and uh and that's and that's it for and for the sbs mode i'd recommend you know trying it out and seeing if if it works well for you if you get a consistent experience it's pretty cool honestly to be able to move the display and kind of get it to feel closer to you i've actually found that i prefer it that way let's look at the side view mode. So with the side view mode, um, what I get here is not a virtual display. It doesn't move with my head anymore, but it does. Um, uh, it does actually still have to adhere to all the same limitations as the as the virtual display mode. So this has to be a Vulcan game. Um, you don't have to worry as much about performance or frame rate or input lag. Because uh, because it's not you know it's not trying to keep up with your head movements anymore, but it is utilizing um, your sort of your peripheral, so you can put the screen in any corner you'd like, and you can see here that I've got a couple new controls, so I can put it in any of the four corners. Um, I can also put it in the center, which is kind of an odd choice, but it does allow you to to have a static display that you can resize. So most people would probably use this for the corners. I can put it in the top left, then I can make the size you know full screen again which would not be using side view really, or very small. This way I can actually pay attention to things that are happening to me in the real world, have a conversation with someone, watch another show or something like that, look at another screen while I'm also playing a game. And then the last mode that you can see here in the, in the slider is VR light. So for this mode, I'm actually gonna exit out of Mass Effect. And I wanted to load up a game. That is in the first person. So loading up Morrowind here. Takes a little bit to get through the intros. And once this loads up, 
this mode creates sort of a, a VR experience, but just note that this is for regular games. So, you know, you don't need Steam VR or anything else installed. And now that it's loaded, um, because, because my head movements are moving the mouse, um, I can actually get a sort of immersive experience because this is a first person game and the mouse moves the aiming. Um, when I move my head, the, the game actually looks around so I can look up, down, left, right. Um, it, because it's a mouse, it doesn't do the, um, the rotation, but, um, it creates a little bit more of an, of an immersive experience. And this is like, again, this is not actually VR. I can play any game this way um, and any game that uses the mouse, this will move the mouse. So it's great for first person. It's pretty good for third person. You wouldn't want to do this for any mode where you're using the mouse to actually like move a cursor on the screen. But otherwise, you can use this in any game. And um, you know, the one the one weird quirk for first person games is that um, for non VR games, where you're looking is also where you're aiming. So for a shooter, this is this is a little bit odd. It takes some getting used to. You might like it. You might not. It where you're looking is where you're aiming. So. Um, so, you know, you can look around and it's a great VR experience, but ultimately you're kind of aiming using a joystick and your head, which is a bit interesting. Um, whereas with VR, you actually have, you know, hand tracking. So you can aim somewhere and look somewhere else. And, and it's, it's a little bit more of an immersive experience without the odd aiming thing. But this, um, you know, you're playing games that were not meant to be VR in a sort of VR like mode. So just keep that in mind, but otherwise you might think it's, you might kind of find it cool. If I go back to the, to the XR gaming plugin here. And, and look now when I'm in VR light mode, I'll see that there is a new slider here called mouse sensitivity. <clears throat> Depending on your sensitivity setting, um, you might find that the, um, that the game's look is sort of like one-to-one -one with your look. So if I look 90 degrees to the right, the, the, player in the, the player in the game, the view will actually rotate 90 degrees. So you'll want to play with the mouse settings and with the mouse sensitivity and figure out what's the right sensitivity for you. You can, you know, raise it up a little bit and then, and then if I only look 45 degrees, maybe it looks a whole 90 degrees. That actually might be nicer because now I, I can look behind me in the game without having to shift in my chair. Um, and, and you will get used to this, so it'll still feel immersive. It'll, it'll feel like you're able to look around, but, but it's more sensitive. So I can get a 360 view while only rotating my head, you know, 180 degrees right to left. And then the last setting that we have here that I wanted to touch on um, is joystick mode. And I actually want to I actually want to talk about the mouse mode settings before I get into that. Um, so this works great for any games that use a mouse. Um, if you're playing a game where you're using a controller and not keyboard and mouse, um, sometimes the games don't blend those very well. So you have a controller and then your head is a mouse, and it might not actually like that. Uh, and in that case, you you might want to try going in to your controller settings. And this is not a great example because it's a keyboard mouse game, but you can choose a layout that is actually um, keyboard and mouse right here, this one. So you can choose a layout that turns your controller into a keyboard and mouse. And if that works with your game, then your head movements, which move the mouse, will blend seamlessly with your mouse, with your, with your stick movements that move the mouse. Um, that's one way you can get it to merge um, if, if it doesn't play well with the controller. The last thing, which is really, um, uh, you know, use it out of desperation, is the joystick mode. If you enable this, it will turn your head movements into the right joystick on a new controller. So if I go into the settings and I look at the controllers, I now have a XR virtual joystick. And if I test it, I can actually see when I move my head, the joystick moves. Um, this works fine as a second controller, but you'll notice it is a second controller. So there's the Steam Deck controller, and then there's this new controller. And that causes problems because most games aren't going to want to merge two controllers together into one. But I left it there for the small percentage of games where maybe it'll actually work and actually be a good option. Um, most people will probably not use that. So that's it. Those are all the modes, and those are all the sort of recommended settings. I think I've covered everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll be uh, posting more videos as things evolve. But for now, this is sort of a, a complete guide to, to the plugin. So um, happy gaming. Enjoy.